welcome back remember i was asking you questions earlier about what brings on childhood cancers and how can we prevent them can we even cure them or is it the parents fault or is it genetic well we have a very very beautiful doctor here she's a pediatric oncologist right yes <laughs> She's uh, the person of Dr. Sally Fu. She will telling us more about this and help us understand how to detect them early. Welcome, Doctor, to Vodafone Healthline. Thank you very much. So you, you had all my bottled up questions. I, I it's, did. It's really boggling. Yeah. Because when we are adults, you can say you can blame yourself one way or the other. Not all the time, though, please. I'm not saying every cancer can be blamed on something. Absolutely. But... People usually will brush it off and say it was probably a lifestyle something. You know, along the line, you were indulged in something. But for a child, I've even heard of babies mm. as well. Mm. What brings that on and what's going on here? Okay. So basically, childhood cancers tend to arise mm. when what we call the cell, which is the very smallest living part of a human being, mm -hmm tends to divide without regulation. Mm. So it's, it's, there's no control over how it divides. Mm. So you see those cells in various parts of the body dividing very quickly without any control over them. And eventually they would form masses. Mm. Now, um, there are when different- you say masses, no, in tree, like I said, buono. Exactly. Uh, okay. So there are different types of cancers mm. in children. Okay. And a cancer can form anywhere from the head to the toe. But in colour cancer, no, then the deba, what brings it on? So um, most childhood cancers, we do not know the causes of most of them. Okay. There are a few that we, we know the causes. And there are some viral infections, some germs, that can actually lead to the formation of cancers. Sir? So, yes. Gems. Yes. So there are some... Emwawa. Yes, exactly. Wow. So there are some germs called viruses. Okay. And some of those viruses, uh, we know them, mm -hmm. like hepatitis B, which is something that can be prevented by vaccination. So it's part of the childhood vaccination mm, program in Ghana mm, and in mm, most countries. Mm, so mm. It's, it's one of them. Mm. HIV is also known to be associated with some cancers. Okay. Then there's one virus that the name is not very common to us, yeah. even though almost everybody would have had some contact with that type of virus before. Mm. Mm. It's called the Epstein virus. And that type of virus causes a certain cancer that is very common. In fact, it used to be very common in Ghana used many years be. ago. Yes. And that okay. cancer is called Beckett lymphoma. But, but it's the, usually mm -hmm. a cancer that arises. Usually, most of the time, you see it around the jaw. Okay. So those jaw uh, cancers uh, are, are usually so, caused by that virus. Dr. Salifu, you yes. said it used to be. That means there's been some improvement in statistics? So what has happened is that more cancers are being diagnosed these days. Oh. So in Ghana, um, childhood cancers, we expect to have between 1,200 to 1,500 new cases in a year. However, we do have a huge deficit in the diagnosis mm. such that we see only about a quarter of them between Kolebu Teaching Hospital and Konfano Teaching Hospital. Mm. Um, a cancer is very devastating to uh, diagnose and communicate to parents. Yes. However, to, to the good news is that childhood cancers are different from adult cancers. Yes. They may bear the same names. Mm -hmm. However, the treatment success mm. is very good. As much as possible, we would always want to let people know the difference between the adult cancers and childhood so what cancers. are those differences and how do we spot yes. it early on? The, the huge difference with, with uh, childhood cancers is that the cure rates are very high. Okay. So in a setting where we are able to detect it early, 
and we institute the right treatment and the patient stays on the treatment to the end, more than 90% of cancers can be cured. Okay. But how However, do you spot them? We need to detect them early. How? And the detection mm -hmm. is it's something we would call some early warning signs. And mm -hmm, I'm just mm -hmm. going to go through that yes, list. Please. So when we start from head to toe, yes. one of the common cancers that we have that affects the eye of a child, and in mm -hmm. fact, a child can be born on the first day of life and you would see that cancer. Okay. It's called retinoblastoma. The early warning sign is that there is some whitish, you see something whitish in the eye. Now, when you look at mm -hmm. a person's eye, you see a, a darker mm. area, mm. Mm. you know, within that large black area. Yes. So that we call the pupil. Mm. So the pupil would appear to be whitish okay. rather than dark. Yes. And that means that the cancer is inside. Mm. Now, it can be mistaken for something called a cataract. I have to say this because most children may present with that early and then they end up being told that their parents are told that it's a cataract and then they wait until it becomes a cancer we cannot treat. So apart from that whitish thing in the pupil, for that same cancer, sometimes when a child is looking at an object, one of the eyes is not really focused. It's mm. looking elsewhere. I know that it has a name in the local parlance. I mm. have forgotten what it is. Has it, it look at me or? Exactly. So when you see a child who used not to have that, okay. and suddenly starts so having, having that, that. Okay. you need to report it okay. quickly. Okay. Also, sometimes a parent may say that this, yeah, this child's eye, my child's eye looks like a cat's eye mm -hmm. in darkness. Mm -hmm. That kind of complaints need further investigations. Sometimes when these are overlooked, you would see that the eye will start bulging out. Bulging? Yes, it's so clean. it starts coming out, out of the socket. So that is something that has to be reported quickly. It simply mm. means that the disease is advanced, mm. but we would have to evaluate to, to be able to tell the extent of the disease. Okay. Another sign that has to be looked out for are swellings, swellings that may happen around the neck, especially around the neck. Look at swellings, and it yes. doesn't look like it's rashes and now pompo. And how does it look like? So it will look typically like what they will say pompo. Okay. Meanwhile, it is not a pompo. Okay. It just keeps growing big. It doesn't show the what they will typically say the mouth that will break um, open. No, it's just something. what? Um, yes. Exactly. Mm. So, exactly. It just okay. gets bigger and bigger. Okay. So when you see those swellings, especially around the neck, mm. around the jaw, mm. sometimes the abdomen will become you know big. big. Uh -huh. so people will say the stomach becomes big, so mm. the, that becomes big. Mm. The swellings may also appear on the legs or the arms. Mm. When you see these things, I know that uh, traditionally we don't like to send swellings to hospitals mm. because it's said that when you go and they give an injection, the child will die. Mm. It is not the case. We are pleading with everyone. When you see a child having this, you need to report to a hospital as early as possible we could save the child's life. Mm. The other thing that, you know, we have to look out for, sometimes there are no swellings. Okay. But these things, some of the cancers occur in blood. So with the blood running through our body, mm -hmm. a cancer can form inside the blood. Mm -hmm. So in that manner, you would see that the child will start having temperature. Okay. What people will say that the temperature is high fever. or fever. Uh -huh. So we are saying that if a child has fever, mm -hmm. you know, on and off two mm -hmm. weeks and you cannot explain what it is, tests do not point to anything. Please let the child seek care for us to evaluate. Seek care from who? So in Ghana, there are two centers that can comprehensively treat cancers. That mm -hmm. is Kolebu Teaching Hospital mm -hmm. and Konfuanochi Teaching Hospital. Mm -hmm. Now, there are other hospitals mm -hmm. that also take care of children with cancer. Mm -hmm. Cape Coast Teaching Hospital mm -hmm. is there. Tamale Teaching Hospital is yes. there. Holy Family Hospital in uh, Techiman uh -huh, is there. Uh -huh. So we have then Agogo Presbyterian Hospital. Okay. They are also there. Okay. So we have these centers that okay. have also been set up okay. to be able to manage these cancers. 
And one thing I want to say, when we detect early, mm. childhood cancer can be cured. Okay. So early detection is what save we need. Lives. Will, will save lives. Mm. Um, in Ghana, we have usually about 70% of our cases coming to us in the advanced stages. Mm. So sometimes you may not hear so much good news about it because they come in the advanced mm -hmm. stages. So we are really appealing to parents, to the public, everywhere. We go to any and every opportunity we get, we try to go and then create the awareness. September is a month for childhood cancer awareness. Mm. So every opportunity we would get, we would take to scale up this mm. education. Mm. Childhood cancer is not a case. Mm. There's cure for it. Mm. The key is early detection. Early detection. We are so grateful. You've taught us so much about how we can detect these little, little things we take for granted mm. and not allow superstition exactly. to get the better of us. Thank you for coming on Vodafone Healthline. Thank you.